How to Create the Universe, The God Series Book 32, by Mike Hockney. This free audiobook series has been brought to you by the Foundation of Illuministic Guides. Contact the Foundation Public Liaison, the Phoenix, at tinyurl.com slash foundation322. Check our Foundation page at tinyurl.com slash foundation323. And we have a posting group with many books and resources at tinyurl.com slash foundation324. For the complete books that will be covered in this series see tinyurl.com slash hockney322. Remember, there are many truths within lies and lies within fact. Truth is relative to the observer. The sign of a seeker is the quest for the truth. In that sign you shall conquer. Find the path in your own quest for the Gnostic Grail of Illumination. Choose wisely. We will be watching you. In a hoc signo vinces. Chapter 6. The God Equation. We're going to do something remarkable. We're going to make the God Equation as simple as possible by applying a speed to Euler's formula. The standard formula is x equals cos x plus i sin x. However, we are now going to write i cx equals cos cx plus i sin cx, but with c equals 1, so that we have not actually changed Euler's formula at all. We shall of course equate c to the speed of light, or, rather, the speed of sinusoids, and we shall ensure that it always equals 1, no matter the frequency, by writing 1 equals f, as in c equals f, with c equals 1 where f is frequency and is the wavelength. No matter what f is, we can always pair it with equals 1 slash f, ensuring that c equals fx, 1 slash f, equals 1. We now have a speed associated with Euler's formula, and it's the same for every instance of the formula, regardless of how much we change the frequency. That's why the speed of light is an absolute. And note that we have a speed of light for the cosine wave and a speed of light for the sine wave. In physics, you will see expressions such as ft equals a sin t, where t is time, but is amplitude and is angular velocity. It's vital to realize that you cannot use such expression in terms of the immaterial ontological mathematical world outside space and time to which we have been referring. You can use time only when it has been defined and derived. You can't just assume it. So, forget all about time and space references in relation to the fundamental equations of existence. These must never be used. Physics defines speed as distance over time. This already supposes an ontological understanding of space and time, which simply does not exist in physics. For argument's sake, let's agree that time is imaginary space. In that case, speed is real space distance divided by imaginary space distance. That is we are dealing with the ratio of two distances. So, what's moving? The thing that's moving is of course energy. And, as we see with photons, Energy can be in motion despite being outside space and time. Never forget that science is just an ad hoc, arbitrary set of heuristics designed to achieve practical success in the sensory world. It has nothing at all to do with the eternal necessity and rational, logical and analytic completeness and consistency of the non-sensory world that underlies the sensory world. Nothing at all is meaningfully defined in science. Everything is defined instrumentally with regard to how to measure it not with regard to what it is and how and why it exists at all. That is its ontology. Science has no interest in rational issues. It's all about empiricism. Motion, as we have seen, derives from the principle of sufficient reason, and nothing else. It has nothing to do with time. We cannot privilege real space over imaginary space. So everything we say of one we must be able to say of the other. Science completely rejects this rational requirement. You have to think of motion mathematically not scientifically. In the dimensionless world, motion takes place in relation to both real and imaginary components. In the dimensional world, born from the dimensionless world, space is actually complex numbered space, not the real numbered space of science. Space divided by time is not speed. It is in fact the complex spatial context in which motion occurs. As speed through space increases, the speed through time correspondingly decreases and vice versa. In the dimensionless world, we can replace the scientific notion of dimensional speed, distance over time, with the notion of dimensionless speed, which is equal to frequency, a number, multiplied by wavelength, another, related number, the inverse of the frequency. In physics, c equals f. Here we have the concept of speed without space and time, 
photons are not in space and time. This is exactly the concept we want to emphasize. We are making it an integral part of ontological mathematics, and not of physics. Speed is always the same if, every time we increase the frequency, we proportionately decrease the wavelength maintaining a constant ratio of 1. The speed of motion is always the same, equals 1, but the energy content of the motion varies according to the frequency. A speed involving f equals 1 and equals 1 is the same as the speed involving f equals 100 and equals 1 100, yet the latter is associated with motion of much higher energy capable of delivering a much higher energy impact. Note that we are providing no units for frequency and wavelength. This is because these are dimensionless numbers. This is a purely mathematical system. It has nothing to do with space, time and matter. A complete and consistent set of Euler circles, forming a single, autonomous monad, involves the Euler circle defined with regard to every conceivable valid frequency and matching wavelength. In relation to a cosine wave, C equals F corresponds to a real numbered frequency and wavelength, and in relation to an imaginary sine wave, C equals F corresponds to an imaginary numbered frequency and wavelength. Science, because it has no clear definitions of anything, forever gets things almost right, but slightly mixed up. Above all, it can't handle imaginary and complex numbers since it ideologically denies that these have any real existence. Therefore, it has to keep introducing heuristics to ensure it never refers to imaginary and complex numbers as actual things and this has a devastating effect on the rationality and consistency of its definitions, leading to the bewildering and totally unnecessary complexity of something such as M-theory. So, all waves travel at exactly the same speed, but they can be associated with radically different energies. A monad comprises the entire set of valid energies, forming a complete and consistent autonomous set. Science has never once explained why the speed of light is an absolute. This singular fact is naturally built into ontological mathematics, and a more elegant version of the God equation. Remember, never refer to space and time in eternal equations. One of the reasons why M-theory cannot be a final theory of existence is that it talks of 1D strings vibrating in an 11D space-time, but we already know that space-time is something created. It's not eternal and necessary. If you refer to temporal and contingent things, you cannot in any sense be constructing a final explanation. A child could instantly ask an M-theorist proudly brandishing a final version of the theory, what are space and time, and where do they come from? And the M-theorist wouldn't have a clue how to answer, because the theory doesn't actually explain anything at all. It's just a giant heuristic attempting to explain away the observable world but with nothing to say about the unobservable world of pure mathematics that truly explains reality. A new mentality. You need a whole new mentality when coming to ontological mathematics. You are dealing with reason and logic alone. Forget all concepts such as space, time and matter. Forget empiricism and experiments. You are dealing with ultimate reality an immaterial singularity outside space and time. Only your reason and logic can study it. Everything else is useless. This enormously simplifies what you are required to understand, and how you go about understanding it. Planck's constant, the Planck constant, denoted h, also called Planck's constant, is a physical constant that is the quantum of action, central in quantum mechanics. First recognized by Planck in 1900, it was originally the proportionality constant between the minimal increment of energy, E, of a hypothetical electrically charged oscillator in a cavity that contained black body radiation, and the frequency, F, of its associated electromagnetic wave. In 1905 the value E, the minimal energy increment of a hypothetical oscillator, was theoretically associated by Einstein with a quantum or minimal element of the energy of the electric magnetic wave itself. The light quantum behaved in some respects as an electrically neutral particle, as opposed to an electromagnetic wave. It was eventually called the photon. The Planck-Einstein relation connects the particulate photon energy E with its associated wave frequency colon E equals H. Dot. Planck discovered that physical action could not take on an arbitrary value. Instead, the action must be some multiple of a very small quantity later to be named the quantum of action and now called Planck constant. This inherent granularity is counterintuitive in the everyday world, where it is possible to make things a little bit hotter or move things a little bit faster. This is because the quantum of action are very, 
very small in comparison to everyday macroscopic human experience. Hence, the granularity of nature appears smooth to us. What is the Planck constant really all about? Consider a point flowing round the circumference of a Euler circle. If the point had zero speed, it wouldn't flow at all. It would have no dimensions. If the point had infinite speed, on the other hand, it would be everywhere on the circle at once, and thus have the complete dimensionality of the circle. However, if its speed is neither zero nor infinity then its speed must be a finite number between zero and infinity, and this number must be part of the complete and consistent mathematical system, just like in D. The number in question is C, the speed of light, or, to be more precise, the speed of sinusoids in the frequency domain outside space and time. This is strictly a mathematical number. It's not scientific at all. In natural units, it is simply one, since real numbers and imaginary numbers are perfectly balanced. All sinusoids in the frequency domain travel at exactly the same speed, and that means that the flowing point in every sinusoid has exactly the same size. This is a tiny 1D number, and is none other than the ontological Planck constant. Once again, this is a number of pure mathematics, not of science. The flowing point is the basic particle and is the smallest possible size of a particle. The famous problem of wave-particle duality is resolved by the fact that the flowing point follows a wave trajectory, the wave aspect, while the flowing point itself is a localized energy packet, the particle aspect. The higher the frequency of the wave, the more energy the flowing point carries. Providing you analyze wave-particle duality mathematically rather than scientifically, there is no contradiction. The very essence of a sinusoid is to have all of its energy concentrated in a tiny 1D package called the flowing point. While the 1D packet is in the frequency domain, its net effect is dimensionless. As the packet flows round the Euler circle, it passes through as much negative territory as positive territory. So we can say that its 1D nature changes from positive to negative, and thus has a resultant of zero. When the 1D packet enters space-time, it now has a dimensionality in relation to space and time, and this, in fact, is none other than the basis of the 1D string loops of M-theory. M-theory is just a clunky space-time heuristic superimposed over ontological mathematics. We defy any theorist in the world to prove us wrong. No matter what science says or does, we can always underpin it with analytic mathematics, and show how all of the concepts of science are the simply clumsy versions of, and approximations to, underlying mathematical concepts and entities. There is no such thing as a science not grounded in pure ontological mathematics, the queen of the sciences.